All right, my man, state your name. Let them know you on Real Talk with Nick. Yo, what's up? What's up, y'all? My name is Victor, and I'm on Real Talk with Nick. That's what's up, man. Listen, man, I want to talk to you about Nick's point guards, man. We in desperate need of a point guard, right. you know? But before I ask you who would you like to come to the Knicks as a point guard, yeah. I'm going to ask you who you think was the greatest point guard that the Knicks ever had. Ward Clark. And after Ward Clark, Ward Clark Frazier, who, who's next? Earl. Earl Monroe. Yeah. Hey, can I get a third one, your top three? Mark Jackson. My oh, man. Okay, Mark <laughs> Jackson. That's what it is. Mark Jackson. So we got Clark, Earl of Pearl Monroe. Yeah. And Mark Jackson. Mark Jackson. All right, man. So that's yeah. what it is, man. So now, yeah. Nick is going to ask you, who would you like currently to come to the Knicks as a point guard, man? So I got two point guards in mind. Number one is Jalen Brunson. Jalen Brunson, I got nothing to prove. He already proved what he could do without Luka Dungeon. He already done that. Um, I don't think, and I, if, you know, I might be wrong, but I don't think he's going to be happy staying over there in Dallas. I really think he wanted to find his way over here. Why do I say that? Because he already proved that he could run his own team. Right. You know, hello, one of the best defenders, one-on-one, a hell of a facilitator. You know, he controlled the ball uh, 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 the way a point guard should. He's very shifty with his uh, ball handling skills. You know, we need somebody like that. And he has developed into the NBA nicely, slowly, little by little. Right. They didn't rush to actually uh, just throw him into the fire like that. And he's turning out to be a hell of a great point guard. When Luka Dungeon was out, he was the one that was carrying them right. into the playoff. Right. You know, his regular season numbers are up there with some of the best point guards in the league. Right. You know, the guy was having, I think it was 16 to 18 points a game in four to five um, assists per game as a backup point guard slash shooting guard. You can ask for anything better than that. So just imagine him running a team like the Knicks, who he's he got connection with because of his dad. Okay. His dad used to play for the Knicks. So I'm, you know, he would like, and this is the rumors already, and I do believe that he would like to wear a Knicks uniform. If we don't get him in the draft, I will. Uh, uh, no, if we don't get him, if we go into the draft and we could actually get our hands on Purdue's Jalen Ivy. I will be more than happy with that. Jalen Ivory? Yes, he's like the next John Moran. Really? You no, know, yes. He's that fast. I actually seen a game with this guy. Catch a rebound. The opposite team is in front of him. He actually outran the whole team from one side of the court to another. All 90 feet. That's how fast he is. You know, and that'll cure our point guard situation that everybody's complaining about. I still believe that IQ could turn into that type of point guard. If you pull the, 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 somebody to mentor him the right way, which is the right coach, which to me, again, is Mark Jackson, or just simply let Jalen Rose take over when it comes to that. Let him mentor him. Okay. You know, so those are my two, the two point guys I would love to see with the Knicks, but especially Jalen Brunson. Okay. Now, we have to get rid of some players, man. Right. Besides Julius Wren. Right. Cause I know Randall's under the, under the right. fire, but New York is like divided with right. him because of his attitude, man. That's, that's the sad part. I'm hearing about the departure of Julius Randall, not so much about his playing. It's his attitude. His attitude. Okay. Who else do you think should be packaged up? Noel, because Jericho Sam is ready to step out. Jericho Sam is big. He's athletic. Remember, this guy is the same dude that in practice – Went to dunk and he said it was so high he hit his lip. That was uh, during the combine last year. That's how high he could go up. So, in the last 10 games when he was playing with the Knicks, he stepped up to the occasion. Right. You understand me? Like I said before, the one thing that I got against, against Tom Thibodeau is that he figured this kid's got to show him a little bit too much. He came with a reputation of not playing rookies. People do not get good on the bench. So let me ask you this. Yeah. How much blame should management get? Because they know this, this man's repertoire. They know what his past coaching skills is right. like. So management gets most of the blame because if you know this guy has a reputation of not playing this rookie, that at the end they spoke to him. He said, they said that you better play them because we wanted someone to see what we had. And we saw what we had. 
was very positive. Management around the NBA need to take control again. Okay, we pay you this money, we got you here, I'm demanding this from you. So this is something that could have happened earlier and management was just letting it ride. You understand? Letting him get away with that. Now, Civito is not perfect. I like him because he got a, 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 a defensive mind mentality. I love defense. But, you you know, he's not going to be perfect. I know that. But you also got to listen to the fans. And the fans were asking for this kid to be played. That's when management decided to step it in and put pressure on him. And he finally let it happen. Right. You understand me? So, but management gets most of the blame because this is something you should have done a long time ago, especially after the All-Star break. The Knicks had a good chance, a very good chance to at least make it into the plane mm. if this would have happened earlier. The record shows mm. last 10, 15 games, what were they, like 10 and 13, something like that. It was something like that, but they had a winning record. Okay. With the young kids. Right, right, right. And the veteran, the veteran sitting down. So what does that tell you? Come on. Okay. Now I want to talk about players the Knicks let go that we might have some type of regret over. But I mentioned Frank Nilakina, man. You really like Frank? I wasn't great on Frank Nilakina, but I see he's playing great in the postseason. Right. With the Dallas Mavs. Right. On a defensive end. Right. Why he couldn't do that for the Knicks, man? Um, because here, here's the problem. And I'm going to pull this on New York. New York is, uh, let's win now, and let's not develop our players. New York got this bad habit of always signing veterans, players, that that take over these young kids' minutes, and they do not let these kids develop. Uh, it, when that happens, a lot of kids, they lose a lot of confidence in themselves. Like, why did you need to bring somebody who got 10, 15 years in the league? They've done that too many times. Now, um... Freddie Nikina probably, I mean, defensively, a hell of a ball player. My thing with Frank was that he did not, they, they gave him the opportunity to develop a jump shot. Okay, he didn't have that. They still could have kept him, but he was a hell of a ball player defensively. Damn, he did it to Russell Westbrook a couple of times. And that's not easy because, you know, Russell Westbrook, with his motor running up and down, it's not easy. You said Frank Nikina locked down Russell Westbrook? Yes, he did. He did that a couple of times. Nobody, in fact, I don't think anybody gave Russell Westbrook a hard time like Fran and Nikina did. Because I remember some of those games, and 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 they, they used to talk about it. They used to talk about it. Uh, so is it safe to say that the Knicks made a mistake letting Frank Nikina go? When we speak of development, do you think they let him go yeah, too soon? Yeah, they let him go too soon. New York got a bad habit of doing that. They let him go too soon. So they made a mistake letting Frank Nikina go. They let him mistake letting Frank Nikina go. Uh, but it's a history that the Knicks have. Remember when the Knicks signed Carmelo Anthony? Right. Or oh, uh, uh, they trade for him? They trade for him, and we gave up so much. We gave up too much for him. He was going to be a free agent in the summer. He was going to come to New York anyway. Why did you need to make that trade? Everybody knew that, that Melo was coming to New York. And they went out there and traded for him. And we let so many pieces get away. Oh, man. We let Chandler get away. Along with uh, there was like it was Chandler. I think was I think they let Lee get away also. What you like David about Lee. Chandler game? Huh? What you like about Chandler? Tyson Chandler, right? Oh yes, but Tyson Chandler was able to play a defensively different position, and on top of that, he could play, he he was he was skilled enough to play to play small forward and power forward. You need people like that, you know. You need people that are in a team. And anytime you got a player, like Fernandekina, Fernandekina could defend the one and two. Perfect. You know, uh, he made a difference on the floor when he was on the floor with the Knicks when he came to de defending. Because people now in the NBA, they don't want to play defense. You saw how LeBron James was playing defense the whole year. We his hands on his hips. Apparently, he was just only, only worried about the offensive part. You know, so people nowadays don't really want to play defense like that, man. And, you know, to win championship, you need to play defense. So you need somebody on the bench like that. Okay. You need somebody on the bench like that. Okay, okay. And when we speak about who would you want as a backup guard? Because, a, you know. As a backup guard? Yeah. After Jalen Brunson? Yeah. The Knicks got it. Who? The Knicks got backup guards. Okay, you got to let these kids develop. IQ, 
you know, and uh, not as a Quinton Grimes. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned IQ, right? Yeah. Because I keep hearing this talk about Dominic Mitchell possibly being a prospect for the New York Knicks. But well, Donovan Mitchell is clearly, clearly wants to wear a Knicks uniform. He grew up as a Knicks fan. He's from New York City. It will be a, oh my God, huge upgrade. You but, know he's hanging out with Emmanuel you quickly in Connecticut. Thank yeah, and Emmanuel, uh, uh, yeah. And Emmanuel quickly, he's uh, actually, and he came out in the newspaper saying that he's actually um, trying to lure him in. Yes. He doesn't have to do much of that because he wants to be in New York. He, you know, everybody knows that. But it's all about what, what do we get? Because I don't think he's a free agent. You're going to have to trade. What are we going to give up for him? <coughs> okay. If you're, go, if you're going to do something like um, give up Julius Randle and, uh, and a pick, I would, go, I would do that. Okay. And what about Zion Wins? He's another player that want to come for the Knicks. Right. So, he's not a free agent. <laughs> and it all depends on, on, the, on the physical report. Well, I, I'm not worried about Zion Williams like as far as his uh, weight, because to me, I think he's doing that on purpose because he's not happy where he's at. You got a point. I you know? that a lot. Yeah. So he's to me, in my eyes, I think he's forcing the trade. Man. Yeah, but see, the Knicks got all these good young ball players. I don't want the Knicks to make a mistake of giving up on these good young ball players again. Like they did with Melo. So Melo was gonna come here anyway. And um they regretted it on. The Knicks got too many good young ball players. I mean, who are you gonna give up? Right. That's the whole thing. Who are you gonna give up? Are they gonna will they take Julius Randle back with a with a couple of picks? Right. Okay, that'll be fine. Right. But I do not want to let go of Chris to Grimes. Do, uh, I, definitely not McBride. Right. My boy hasn't been given the opportunity yet. You gotta give this boy the opportunity. He's a different type of point guard. He's more of a facilitator, but if you don't give him the opportunity, it's the same way you're giving it to IQ, then how are you gonna find out? So if McBride was given an opportunity from the beginning, you think the Knicks would have made the playoffs? Yes. Yes, of course. Every time they brought him up, he stepped up to the occasion. Okay. You know. Okay. You know, every single time that he stepped it up. That he won't grow up, you know. He, he stepped up to the occasion. Yeah. But New York got this thing about um. <coughs> excuse me. Hurry up and develop. Easy. Because the Warriors. <coughs> excuse my language. Let me mark my call. The Warriors took their time with them picks. They had no idea they were going to be this good. Curry's too small. Tonson might not be such a great shooter in the NBA. <coughs> Draymond Green, I think, was picking the second round. So they took their time developing this person. They all came up together. Okay. Why can't the Knicks do the same thing? Got you. The Knicks do the right thing for this upcoming <coughs> season. You see us being a uh, play Brown team in the playoffs? Yes. Okay. The Knicks are not far behind, man. Again, the 76ers did the same thing <coughs> with these young players. You know, uh, Boston with a young player. Marcus Smart, you know, when he first came up, they thought he was going to be this 15 point, 20 point, 15 or 20 points per game. That guy, he didn't develop into that. But they here is a defensive player of the year. Gosh. We are, we are known for not having any patience at all. And that's what we need. Patience. All right, man. Patience is a virtue, my brother. The OG said it, man. Yes. New York Knicks need to learn patience, man, when we come to the youth development and developing our plays. Definitely. And with that, I want to thank you for coming on Real Talk with Anytime, Nick. bro. We out. Peace.